Here at ReRes, we've shown you a bunch of really big video game controllers, like the PlayStation Analog Joystick and the Xbox Steel Battalion Controller. And for the longest time, I thought those were some of the biggest controllers ever made. But it turns out, before that, they made an even bigger controller for the Super Nintendo. And it's possibly rarer than both of those controllers combined. This is the Super Nintendo Exertainment Bike. <laughs> This is the Super Nintendo Exertainment Bike, an exercise bike that was originally manufactured by a company called Life Fitness. This bike right here is from their Life Cycle brand. You may have seen exercise bikes that have looked like this in the past. In fact, you may have seen one that looked exactly like this. But this model right here is a modification of another model they sold, which allows you to plug it up to a Super Nintendo. After the success of the NES, Nintendo found themselves in a position to start creating really strange and interesting products, things that could attract different markets that weren't just kids playing video games. So one thing led to another, and we got this. Whether it was Nintendo that approached Life Fitness first, or Life Fitness approaching Nintendo, all we can really be sure of is that this device was sold to consumers and gyms in the mid-90s all over North America. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh man, this bike is just as hard as riding a real exercise bike, because it pretty much is. Oh, I wish Game Dave never made me get this thing. Oh, so sweaty, Shane. Ew. And you kind of look ridiculous, right? One second. Yes, who wouldn't love the obvious combo of video games and an exercise bike? You know, surprisingly, there were a number of video games based on cycling that were released exclusively in Japan. I know this because I collect them. I mean, really, you know you want a boxed copy of Cycle Race Roadman, right? Is that... Yeah, I better save that for the Fami Corner show. Often I search eBay with super generic terms, and in this instance, I put in bike game. But I didn't just check the video games category, no, I checked all the categories, stupidly going through thousands and thousands of auctions. Some of them were bike video games, but then I saw a giant exercise bike and what looked like a Super Nintendo in the background. What? What? Yeah, that led me to the Exertainment Life Fitness Exercise Bike. Now let's roll some more of that beautiful bike footage. When I first got this bike, I just assumed that the bike connected to the controller port on a regular Super Nintendo. And while it does do that, it needed additional power and information to be sent. So what you end up getting is a box underneath the Super Nintendo that plugs up through the expansion port on the bottom, which is pretty cool, seeing as how in North America at least, that expansion port really wasn't ever used. The bike hooks up to the controller port on the Super Nintendo, but attached to that plug-in is a phone jack, which plugs into the box beneath it. The cord that you connect directly to the bike is actually an Ethernet cord, which is pretty much the standard nowadays for input, but back then it was kind of more uncommon. You also might be expecting that with this bike you'd be able to turn left and right with the handlebars, but you wouldn't be able to do that. These handlebars are fixed, but on the handlebars are two clip-on controllers that basically represent exactly what a Super Nintendo controller has. You have a start and select button, a very squishy, not really so good D-pad, an A, B, X, and Y button, and two shoulder buttons on the back of the controllers. While the bike itself is a really well-engineered piece of hardware, I gotta say that these controllers just really aren't, but we'll get to that a little bit later. You see, while this is a very strange and hard to find device, it wasn't the only one that they released. There was another model, and that one... Hey, that's my part. There were actually two models of the Exertainment bike. The Life Cycle 3500, which was more of a home consumer model that you could order, via toll-free number. And then you had the Big Mama, the Life Cycle 9XS. This version had a built-in monitor and housed the Super Nintendo console and the Life Fitness adapters inside the much larger bike frame. A monster. This is the model that you would often find in gyms because it was made to hold up to 24-7 usage. Oh god. Now that, that is a lot of sweat. Ugh. The 9XS model also had extra inputs for television 
But who's got time to watch episodes of Sliders when you can play a freaking Super Nintendo on it? Speaking of which, how about those games, Shane? The bike I got was bundled with Mountain Bike Rally, and the game itself has some pretty interesting graphics work going into it, although they're kind of poor. You see, while most racing games featured flat levels and stages, stuff that was easy for the SNES to process and make fast addictive gameplay, this game changed it up. There's actually hills, and that's important because when you use the bike with this game, the hills are actually harder to get up. Seriously, it's difficult. The pedals add resistance, making it harder to pedal, and that's actually pretty cool. Problem is, when you make complex geometry like they did in this game, it causes some pretty bad frame rates, making the game very difficult to play. Even with that issue though, I kind of enjoyed exercising on this thing. I mean, it's a novelty, sure, but you really do work up a sweat. Unfortunately though, the controls for this game is where it falls apart. Naturally, you want to move the handlebars to steer, but you can't. So you're forced to awkwardly steer with a directional pad as you maneuver through the course, while also attacking opponents as you race to the finish line. There is a solution to the controls though. See, if you set the difficulty low enough, your character will automatically control its direction. But this comes at a very heavy cost. See, the harder the difficulty is, the more points you get. The more points you get, the closer you are to unlocking new stages. And if you set the difficulty too low to autopilot, kiss the points goodbye. I'm not even ashamed to say this, I got really physically tired after a few rounds of the first stage. I wasn't able to get enough points because it would have taken almost a full day of biking just to unlock the first stage. It's maddening. Having the bike control itself shouldn't have come at such a high cost, considering that you're physically exerting yourself every single time you play. The game cart is also bundled with a program manager, and this manager pretty much allows you to set up the bike in any way you want to kind of set yourself on little goals and things like that. It's pretty much exactly what you would find on a regular exercise bike, but implemented with a Super Nintendo instead. Now, believe it or not, this wasn't the only video game cartridge that was released that utilized the Super Nintendo Extertainment bike. There was actually another, and the second one had the exact same mountain bike rally and program manager in it, but it also had an additional game. Now I know what you're thinking, it's gotta be another sports themed game, right? Possibly featuring a riding bike of some sort? Well, you'd be dead wrong. How and why they chose to get the rights to Speed Racer and turn it into a biking game is completely beyond me. Now this game is just like the Speed Racer that was released on Super Nintendo without this bike attachment. It runs the exact same way, plays the exact same way, and also has the same exact unlock system that I absolutely hated in Mountain Bike Rally. The only difference is that for your vehicle to move, you have to pedal. And it's super, super annoying. But I will say this, if you were gonna compare both games, Mountain Bike Rally and Speed Racer, Speed Racer is a much more fun game to play. It just logically doesn't make any sense. I mean, realistically, if every time I'm pedaling this car's moving, I feel like I'm driving a Little Tykes machine or possibly riding the Flintstones car. This is just a bizarre choice for a game insert, but there it is, and it actually does work pretty well. Still though, I prefer the original Super Nintendo version because at least with that one, you're not sweating profusely every time you finish a race. These cartridges and this bike are pretty hard to come by. Maybe it's a little bit easier to find Mountain Bike Rally Extertainment Bike, but you can't play it without the bike itself. But there is a way to play Mountain Bike Rally without the bike, as Dave can show you. It's not great. It's not even good, really. But if you still wanna play the overpriced mountain bike rally without the need for an expensive, outdated exercise bike, which means you're crazy, <laughs> there is a derivative version of Life Fitness's mountain bike rally. And it's called Cannondale Cup. This is a rebranded mountain bike rally with some interesting differences. Most notably that brand deal with Cannondale Bicycle Corporation. This version of the game uses the names of actual professional cyclists like Frank Roman, whereas Mountain Bike Rally calls him Bruce. Just, just Bruce. All of the stages remain the same and are equally as awful to look at. 
but your bike selections represent actual Cannondale products. Not so much in Mountain Bike Rally. But that's okay, at least in Shane's version, he gets to ride the Power Shaft X. For the most part, the differences end there. It's still just an ugly, ugly bicycle ripoff of Road Rash. Unfortunately, the only thing interesting about Cannondale Cup and Mountain Bike Rally is the Exertainment bike. Right, Shane? Shane? Are you back on that thing? <gasps> Oh, oh man, I can't do it. I just can't beat that stage of mountain bike rally. Oh man, no matter how hard I try. Okay, let's end this video. So, that is a Super Nintendo Extratainment bike. And I gotta say guys, this thing's pretty worth it. Now when you think about video games that do exercise stuff like, I don't know, Kinect games or PlayStation Move games, things that basically use some kind of controller or your body movements to make you exercise, they don't really work that well. This game here though actually provides resistance in the pedals and that makes it really hard to work. This is a workout device and it works really well. Sure, the games aren't really that good, but that doesn't matter. The game itself is not important. It's the idea of working out. And it's far more enjoyable than just going to a gym and using one of their bikes. So, if you really want to get a good workout and try something that is just completely different, go and find one of these, if you can. A big special thank you to Game Dave for helping out with this episode because if it wasn't for him, I would have never known about this bike. And another big thank you to Jay at JKB for basically showing me where this bike was for sale. Without these two guys, this video would not have been able to be created. So thank you guys both and please check out their channels in the links below.